Or when they took x-rays to the masses, everyone thought it was great, and they were even x-raying people's feet and shoe stores to see if their shoes would fit properly. And then they found out, oh, that's bad, that causes cancer. So now they limit the amount of x-rays. Um, now, mostly what we have to deal with is the electromagnetic radiation that's coming from household wiring, high tension lines, and that kind of stuff. And then we have microwave radiation, which would be coming out of your phone or your router for your Wi-Fi or your smart meter or, or cell phone tower. So we'll talk mostly about those two because that's the bulk of the exposure we get today. Uh, anyone remember in May 2011 when the World Health Organization put out this press release calling your, uh, your mobile phone radiation a class 2B carcinogen? Also what they call a possible carcinogen? That's the same as eating lead or DDT. Uh, anyone hear it on the news? No. Or on the radio? Or the news. <laughs> you don't. You didn't hear it. If it was, it was on an alternative station. But mainstream completely ignored it. Um, I'll pass this around later if anyone wants to read it. Anyone wants, I'll email it to you. Uh, you can even find it on the internet. So holding that phone to your head. Uh, same as eating lead or DDT. Bad news. How do you know that it's there? Uh, it's invisible and you can't really feel it. Even people that are sensitive, a lot of times, they might be able to feel the foam, the microwaves, but feeling the, the EMF from our uh, high tension lines and electric lines, that's really hard to do. Well, they invented Gauss meters. That's G-A-U-S-S. -S. And I'm turning this one on right here to the magnetic field. And that's a combination of an electro and a magnetic field. They call it electromagnetic field. There's a standard for safety in Europe. They say below 2.5 milligauss is considered safe. So right here where I'm sitting, we have about 1.3 milligauss. Pretty safe. But if I walk around the house like I did earlier, there'll be some hot spots anywhere where there's electricity. When you're running a machine in the kitchen or running the stove, if it's an electric, you're going to get a high field off of that. But those fields drop off relatively quickly. Also, you're in them for a very short time. So you really don't have much to worry about that kind of stuff. What you really want to worry about is where you're sleeping. If you're like the average person and you're in your bed one third of your life. So you take the meter, you go over to where your bed is and you make sure you have a low field there. If you find that you have a high field, it could be relatively easy to deal with that. Oftentimes there's just some wiring in the wall or some appliance on the other side of the wall and the EMF from the wiring or the appliance will penetrate right through everything your wall is made out of, even if it's cinder block or stone or brick. Um, you simply walk around your room with the meter You'll find a lower spot usually, maybe where your dresser is, and then you could just oftentimes just switch your bed and your furniture to be in a lower field. Um, I want to share a little story with you. Back in the 90s, I owned a health food store and I did a lot of counseling, and this uh, couple came in, the woman had breast cancer, and I lent them a gauss meter, told them how to use it, they went home and gouged their house. And almost 9 o'clock at night, I'm locking up the health food store, getting ready to go home. And they call up and they ask me if I could please come to their house on my way home, please. They don't like what the meter's saying. They want to make sure they're using it properly. They beg me. I said, OK. Head over to their house. Sure enough, I walk around their house with the meter. Every part of the house is in a very high and uh, dangerous field. So I walk outside the house into the driveway, I look around, and I notice right behind their house those really tall high tension lines, the ones that are like 50 feet tall, and these giant pylons. And then I look up and down their street and I see all the houses on their side of the street are backed up to these pylons. I take the meter, I walk down the driveway, I hit the middle of the street, and it drops off to the safe field. 
So I, I know that everyone on the far side of the street is in a very low field. Everyone on their side of the street is in a very high field. So I asked them, how's the health of the neighbors on your side of the street? And both of them, their mouths open up and they're finally they talk and they say every house that they know they talk to a lot of their neighbors one house someone has leukemia one house someone has a rare blood disease there's someone really sick in almost every house uh, backed up to those lines and I said well how's the, the health of the neighbors on the other side of the street and they say no one no one that they know of is sick on that side of the street and I've had a lot of this type of experience over the last two decades with, with this, this type of stuff. So uh, it's very hard to shield this type of radiation. Those people, they ended up selling the house and moving. Uh, and that's what all you really can do if you have that size uh, of a problem. So th that's about all I'm going to say about EMF. But let's talk about the RF, because that's a bigger problem these days. Your mobile phones, the smart meters, the Wi-Fi routers. Um, this uh, is the new tri-field Gauss meter, and before we put it on the EMF, now we'll take it all the way over to the RF, or radio frequency. So we're measuring the, the Wi-Fi routers from the neighbors, because Candace doesn't have a Wi-Fi in the house, which is great. Um, people's phones in their pockets, which are pulsing every once in a while, and any towers around the neighborhood. And we're getting a fairly low reading. You don't really see anything here, which, which is good. Uh, if we were closer to a mobile phone tower, we would see more pulsing. I walked all around the house. The only thing that she has is a, a smart meter. Now, they have two types of smart meters. Most cities have the type that has essentially a, uh, a microwave transmitter in there. It's sending out information to a little box somewhere in the neighborhood, and it can do it from every 20 seconds to every few minutes, depending on which um, type of smart meter that they have. And they're only pulsing for a fraction of a second, but it's a very high pulse. And I've heard lots of stories about people getting sick when they installed smart meters. And what you really want to know is where that smart meter is in relation to your bed. Because if it's right on the other side of the wall from your bed, that could be a problem. And uh, to shield that, it can actually be very simple. This is a uh, emergency blanket that you can get at Target or Walmart or a camping store. They're like three dollars. They come folded up in these little bags, and uh, you just hang this on the wall. Stick some thumbtacks in it on the inside of your house, opposite the smart meter. And every time that thing pulses, it, the RF can't penetrate this thing. So I, I've used this thing, I just did someone's house in Austin last week, brought the meter down, and uh, on this side of it, you get practically nothing, and then if you pull the thing off and put it on the wall, same spot, but without your uh, emergency blanket, you see all kinds of craziness when that smart meter pulses. So, so that's very cheap. Another thing uh, you can do is use Y-Shield paint. This is a paint made in Germany that you can paint on and it'll block out. There's actually a website where you can go to and put in your address and they'll tell you every mobile phone or microwave antenna in the, a radius to your house and, and how far away each one is. And you'll be surprised how many there are bomb bombarding you if you live in a city. If you're out in the country, there's a lot less. Where we live, there's one um, about a half a mile away, and I can actually pick that up outside uh, my bedroom. And a really interesting fact um, about our windows, if you shield your house with the Y-Shield paint or, or use some of this, it can still penetrate your windows, but if you have the newer type of glass, it's called low-E glass, it cuts out some uh, of the heat from the sun. It actually also cuts out some of the radio frequency from microwave towers, which is really interesting. I came upon this uh, information by accident because I have a really old glass door in my house, and I was 
checking it open and close, no difference. And then I have a new door with the low E glass that I did open and close. And it, it was uh, stronger when the door was open than when it was closed. So that low E glass was actually blocking some of that RF out. Um, a lot of people have these uh, routers in their house for their internet. And the router is essentially the same thing as your mobile phone. It's a microwave. Those, those routers can easily be made less harmful. First off, um, if you're sleeping, you're not using your um, internet during the night, just put your router on a timer, a simple timer you can buy anywhere for 10 bucks, set it to go off whatever, you usually go to bed at 11, it goes off at 11, you get up at 7, it goes back on. This way you don't have to unplug it or turn it off on and off every night and you're getting a lot less exposure. What you really want to do is reduce your exposure because not just the World Health Organization, but there's actually hundreds of studies at this point showing that this is uh, a danger, a uh, possible human carcinogen. Um, lots and lots of information on the internet, health experts. What's really interesting is that every study published by a, a mobile phone company that's paid for by the mobile phone industry, they'll say inconclusive. They can't prove either way if it's harmful, if it's not harmful. But when you get independent studies that weren't funded by the mobile phone industry, almost every time they show harm. In fact, there was one very famous researcher who was doing research for Motorola. They were paying him and he found harm. And instead of publishing his research, they fired him and they blackballed him and he, it's, he can't even like get work now. Yeah, there's really bad stuff going on with all this. Um, what we have in our house is we have a router that doesn't have Wi-Fi. We have Ethernet cables, fiber optics basically. We just plug our laptops in. We have them in the downstairs in the kitchen, the living room, in, in the bedroom, anywhere we want it. We walk in, we plug in our laptops. Um, no harmful Wi-Fi. And uh, there actually is some scientific evidence of why some people, and I'm one of them, can feel like their head warm up or feel an uncomfortable feeling when they're holding their phone to the head or, or even in their hand. Um, since the uh, Human Genome Project, they've found a DNA mutation called the MTHFR677. People who have that don't methylate well. And also, when you don't methylate well, you don't make the myelin sheets that cover the nerves very thick. You're, you're a poor uh, maker of this stuff. So when you're in an electromagnetic field, the myelin sheath isn't there to protect the nerve. It's not as thick. It induces the field. The field goes in. And you could feel it in the nerve. So I have a double mutation of this. So I'm really sensitive to it. I noticed it right away the first time I held a mobile phone in my hand, uh, near my head. It bothers me. A lot of people have single mutations, but it, it, it's um, shown now through scientific uh, data collection that about one in five people have either a single or a double mutation. So I have a double, both my parents have singles, I inherited the bad gene from both. My wife has a single, uh, one of her parents has a single mutation. It, it's, it's very common. So what do you do? We all need mobile phones. It's, it's relatively simple. You don't need to hold the mobile phone up to your head. You can use a speakerphone. And I do recommend not holding it when you're using the speakerphone. Put it down on the table somewhere. Have it at least two feet away. What you'll find out when you do a little bit of testing on a meter is that about two feet away, at least 90% of the field drops off. And another thing you should note, the closer you are to a mobile phone tower, the less energy comes out of your phone, so the less harmful it could be. It's when you're really far from a tower 
and you have very few bars, you have a very poor signal, that the phone really puts out a very high field to try to you know, reach that tower, and that's when it's at its most dangerous. So, so speakerphone, that's a no-brainer, anyone can do that. Um, the other thing that is really easy to do, this is an air tube headset. Uh, kind of like a doctor's stethoscope. Electro uh, magnetic little particles or electrons flow up through a regular headset and right out the speakers into your head when, you, when you're on the phone. And you can measure that easily with a regular headset on a Gauss meter set to the EMF scale or the, the electromagnetic. Uh, with this one, you put this on and you, you see nothing over here. You still want to leave the phone at a distance. Uh, this is uh, really an ideal way to talk on a cell phone. Uh, Bluetooth technology is better than holding up the phone up to your head, but there still is a radio frequency transmitter that's right next to your brain and is transmitting to your phone. It's not going to be as strong as the transmitter on the phone, which is transmitting to a tower somewhere you know, in the city. Um, but one step better are these, this type of headset, air tube, or, um, or speaker phones. So we covered um, smart meters, we covered phones, we covered the routers in your house. Um, the last one are those deck phones. A lot of people don't have the cordless phones in their houses anymore. They're getting uh, less common, but they are definitely uh, problematic. Yes, the FCC sets uh, certain standards, not allowed to be above uh, you know, a certain amount of radiation, but even the, the amounts that they set are high and they do cause cancerous tumors. My uh, sister's mother-in-law used to talk on a cordless phone. The antenna was always like on the same side. Like, and she developed the brain tumor right where that home cordless phone antenna was after years of talking on this phone and actually died from it a bunch of years ago. So same thing, if you got one of those home cordless phones, put it on speakerphone. The old ones used to have ports for headsets, but the new ones I'm finding that they, they don't actually have that. I would recommend just getting rid of those and getting a corded one if you still have a corded phone in your house. So I um, wanted to make it short and sweet, and now we could open up for some questions. I could do some demonstrations too.